Hey guys, welcome back to another video by Biology with Zhang Shen. So today we are going to do the Cambridge IDCSE 0610 February March 2023 paper 62. This is the alternative to practical paper. Okay, so as we come to the first question, please read the instructions before attempting the question. Do not skip this. So it's about potato cells take out methylene blue dye and it's placed into a dye solution. So when it's placed in water, the dye will diffuse into the water. So they want to find the effect of temperature here effect of temperature on the diffusion of the methylene blue dye from the dye potato cells. So the student uses this method, cold water, warm water, and big of hot water, measure the temperature, label one test tube C, one test tube W, and one test tube H, then draw a line line separate from the edge of the test tube, place your test tube in the test tube rack. So you have to fill in cold water and then put and then place test tube in the cold water, then place fill again with W and fill with H and do the same process. And step eight, you're provided with three potato cylinders and been soaked in methylene blue solution. And then uh, place the three potato cylinders in the water towel, which is approximately two centimeters in length. And then place one of the potato cylinders from step eight into each test tube. Start the stop clock and leave for 15 minutes. After 15 minutes, measure the temperature of the water and the beaker of the hot water again. Okay. So the first question is usually very simple. It will ask you to um, find and basically take data from images. So the hot water in step two will be 61 degrees. Okay. And then water temperature, the hot water in step 11 is 38 degrees. Okay. Two marks. Okay. Remove the test tube and CWH 10 seconds and place the test tube uh, and the test tube rack. Observe the intensity of the blue color. So they want to say figure 1.3 shows the student notebook in with the observations, prepare a table to show uh, results shown in uh, figure 1.3 so pretty much it's just a um, table drawing so i will just draw it out okay then okay then i will just so here will be test tube and then they want me to find the result of the color. And then the color intensity. Okay. So, so let's fill in the value C, W, H. And then this will be pale, medium, and then dark. Okay, so just three columns and then you can just draw a few more lines. Use a ruler, make sure when drawing tables, that's all. Okay, this is just basically a pro two columns minimum appropriate uh, data and then records. We get you these two marks. So state the conclusion of these results. So since they are finding about uh, the temperature affecting diffusion so you must this must be your conclusion or it can be let's just say this is just a standard answer slot you have to see what kind of answer you put and if it makes sense then you get it correct so this will be as uh, temperature increases increases the rate of diffusion is faster yes Okay, one mark, very simple. Okay, next one. Identify one possible source of error in step eight. Okay, let's go back to step eight. You see, that's why you cannot skip by, cannot by reading this. So you say you are provided with three potato cylinders that have been soaked in methylene blue and then rinse. Place the three potato cylinders in the white towel and cut the three potato cylinders to approximately two centimeter in length. So they say approximately, which in an experiment, it cannot be approximate. It has to be exact. So I think this could be one of the mistakes is that there's a differences in uh, the length of the potato cylinders. Length of potato cylinders. Or oh, another answer that it could be probably the concentration or the volume of the methylene blue dye may be different because they never specify it. So you don't know what is what kind of uh, amount they are using. Okay, so this is just one possible source. 
Okay, identify one safety hazard. When is this safety hazard? It's like, what are the rules to prevent a mistake? Or, like, or you prevent cutting yourself, for example. So since this is about temperature, this you have to use probably a knife. Okay, use a, a knife of a scapel to cut the potato cylinder. They mentioned this. Or you can say be careful of heat, which can burn hands. Okay, these are technically the most sensible answer. Okay, the reading of the thermometer in figure 1.2 shows that the maintenance of the temperature of water during the investigation was a source of error, suggests an improvement to reduce this error. Okay, so every time we see this, right, maintenance of a temperature uh, comes to place, it has to be using a thermostatically controlled water bath. Okay, it's always this answer or any other methods of maintaining temperature of water, but this is always the most standard answer. Do not put water bath only. You just write two more words, thermostatically controlled water bath. Two marks. Okay, the student did not repeat the investigation, only collected one set of results. Explain why it's better to collect several sets of results. So when you collect several sets of results, you not just only find the average, you also can identify any anomalies. Because if you collect many results, right, you can you can see a trend. So when in the in an event there's an error, you can find there's an anomaly in your answer. Okay, the next question they say the sort of investigate surface area on diffusion now, now it's a surface area. So technically you just have to read this, but this would be like a comprehension question technically. So they want to find the IV and the DV of the investigation described in 1B. So IV has been stated in the question already. So IV will be the surface area of the potato cylinder. Okay. Then the dependent variable could be mm, the percentage of light absorbed. Percentage of light absorbed. So this can be fine when there is a measure. The word dependent variable is always about measuring something. So measuring, you know that this is the answer with the percentage of light that is absorbed by the methylene blue dye in the water. Or percentage light absorbed. That's all. Okay. Okay, state one variable that is kept constant in the investigation described in 1B. So they said that this one. Uh, so what you should do is that it should be the same type of dye. The methylene blue dye must be the same. So I could say of dye use. Okay. Alright, next question. They say the figure 1.4 is a graph showing the student's results. Then they ask you to find the surface area used to estimate the percentage of light absorbed by the methylene blue dye when the surface area of the potato cube is 18 cm square. Show on figure 1.4 how you obtain your estimate. Oh, estimate. Okay. So they want you to see on the graph, you must indicate this when the surface area is at 18. So it's about here, 16, 17, 18. So it's about here. This is about mm, It's about 18 centimeters square. So this will be about 70, 68 like that. So uh, it's about 68%. Okay. So the next question is a scientist investigated the nutritional content of that juice. State the name of the vegan or solution that will be used to test the fruit juice for starch. So the starch would be iodine solution. So it's always iodine solution, okay? Okay. All right, state the name of the region of the solution that will be used to test the fruit juice 
for reducing sugar so this will be benedict solution okay a sample of fruit juice was tested for protein state the result of a positive test so a positive test for a light uh for a blue red would be a lilac or a purple color okay plan okay next question planning investigation now okay fruit juice contains vitamin c okay vitamin c plan an investigation to determine the effect of temperature effect of temperature on vitamin c concentration in fruit juice so technically we can see the iv and dv here so the iv is here and determine the effect on the concentration so the concentration will change here so they, they want to see the how is it going to change here so how are we going to write this um, investigation is quite simple my method i use is that i don't care so run away i don't care so run away so iv dv cv safety repeat and most if there's numerical value i will use an average okay so to start this i would say that uh usually i will start off with prepare all the equipment use in this experiment okay then um uh, and of course i would say that um, the fruit juice there will there will be two temperature use which is mm, the one is 30 degrees and one is 70 degrees okay and definitely this is um the then i'm going to add about 25 centimeter cube of fruit juice and place it in a thermostatically controlled water bath why because this is the effect of temperature i don't want the temperature to change you know so the fruit juice i would say the same fruit juice this is a bit constant variable then i will ensure that the volume of drops there will be after that two drops of 0.1 mole of 25 cent never mind <laughs> two drops of uh, vitamin c dcpip into the fruit juice and drop and drop it until a color change is observed okay then of course record the number of drops of the cpip added okay then of course Repeat the investigation at least three times. Okay, and then definitely a safety precaution is that um, wear safety gloves at all times because hot water can spill and burn hands okay so this is the six marks answer okay so just show that uh, there are iv a dv a method technically and a constant variable repeat and a safety precaution so just follow this method i don't care so run away you get the six marks easily okay next question Scientists want to find out if drinking beetroot juice lowers blood pressure. So two groups of men have their systolic blood pressure measured. Group 1 drank 500cm cube of beetroot juice and group 2 drank 500cm cube of apple juice. 
So using the data in table 2.1, calculate the percentage change in mean systolic blood pressure for group 1. So give your answers to a decimal place. So they're asking to find the systolic blood pressure for group 1. So what I need to do is that I need to use a per percentage formula, which is Okay, so is 132.4 minus 127.4 over 132.4 times by 100 will be 3.1 decimal place, 776 will be 3.8. Okay, but since they say percentage change, right, you can see that from 132.4, it becomes 127.4. It's going down, means it's a negative. So the answer needs to be minus 3.8%. Okay? State one factor that was kept constant uh, in the investigation described in 2C. So I think this one would be the volume of juice they are drinking needs to be the same. Okay? Volume of juice. Okay, next question. All right. Every exam, right, there will be mesh magnification question. This is a must. So figure 2.1 is a, a photomicrograph of a section through a bronchial in a human lung. So they want to find the measure the length of the line PQ here. So I will need to use a ruler for this case. So if... So this is about, if I measure it on my ruler right now, it's about 9.6 centimeter. So this would be a 96 millimeter. So calculate the actual width of the bronchial measured using the formula of your measurement. So calc uh, give your answer in two significant figures and the space for working. So I usually would follow this um, formula I am. So to find the actual, I will use the um, length of the line divided by the magnification. So this will be 96 divided by 130. So the actual length would be 0 0.74. Um, so it's 0 0.74 mm. Okay, make a large drawing of the layers of tissue in the bronchial shown in figure 2.1. So what basically they want you to draw is that um, the number of invaginations of a bronchial lining. So which is this one? You draw this part, okay. Draw this one, the whole thing. Okay, all those. Okay, then of course you have to show the muscle layer shown break in the correct position. So you must show all of these. Just a little side line, the muscle break is here. So just draw this whole thing only. Okay. in a large drawing scale. Lah. So do not draw the individual cells. Do not draw those cells that are like, you know, like these are the individual cells. Don't draw that. Just draw the outline of it. Okay. The next question will be a scientist investigated the effect of exercise on breathing rate. And then they said that uh, measure the percentage increase in the breathing rate and the heart rate from the resting rate during a four minute run. So the results are shown in the table 2.2. So you have to plot two separate lines on your graph. Okay, so five marks. Uh, this is a lot. Okay, so I want to plot the grade on the percentage increase resting rate from resting rate against time. Uh, from resting rate against time. Resting rate. So, okay, this will be time in seconds. So here will be the percentage increase from resting rate. Okay, percentage increase in rest, uh, from resting rate. Resting rate, okay. So 
from here, the resting rate would be finding the percentage. Okay. So I've just plot zero sixty. 120, 180, and 240. So there's breathing rate and heart rate. I have to plot two, you know. So I will plot the breathing rate first. So a suitable scale, if I were to look at this, a suitable scale. Hmm, it's quite difficult. Because there's one is like. I can do this, let's see, uh, 20, 40, 60, 80, 120, 140, 160. Let's see if the scale is enough or not. Oh, it's enough. Okay, that's good. All right, so let's do two lines. Uh. Okay, so I start with zero, zero. Again, this is just my, my one here. It's not going to be that accurate. So I'm just trying my best here to make sure that it's correct. So, G4, Oh no, oh no, no, no. I sorry guys. <laughs> 100, 120, 140. Ah, okay, makes sense. Yeah, makes sense, makes sense now. I was like wondering why the scale becomes so small suddenly. Okay, 92, 123, a bit about here. And then 135. And then 142. 142, it's about here. Okay, so if I just match the line, it'll be like this. Okay, then just match the line. Okay, then I'll draw the second line here. 0 to 21, 21, 40, 59, 59, 77. So it's about a straight line, honestly. about here okay just a bit of like okay so include a key here oh all right since they say a key right i have to do one two three and four so okay so the cross here would be the breathing rate rate and then this one Usually it's supposed to be a dot la. It should be a dot, honestly. It should be a dot. 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 So this dot is supposed to be the resting rate, the heart rate. Okay, so five marks. Tricky, yeah? I know. Two graphs, this is the first time. Okay, now they asked to state the conclusion for the data shown in my graph. So this one is of course as a the length of time increases of time increases then the percentage increase there is a percentage increase in um, the breathing and heart rate and heart rate okay just a simple conclusion I 
forgot to put here this percentage here. Okay, that's all for this paper. So I'm sorry this is very long because there's a lot of things to cover here. So I hope to see you guys in this next video. Bye bye.